I am Anil Kumar. This is one of my first videos on finding solutions for linear trigonometry equations. We are calling it part 1 since in this series I will consider very simple examples to get the concepts going. The question here is solve 2 sin x plus square root 3 equal to 0 where x is greater than equal to 0 and less than equal to 2 pi. So we are working in radians, right? So the units are radians. To answer this question, you should change your calculator settings to radians. Now to solve a linear trigonometric equation, we normally work as we work with linear equations. The equation given to us is 2 sine x plus square root 3 equal to 0. We can take away minus square root 3 from both the sides. Then we get 2 sin x equal to minus square root 3. And now we can divide by 2. So that gives us sin x equals to minus square root 3 divided by 2. Now to find x, we could do x equals to sin inverse of minus square root 3 over 2 and we could use the calculator to find this solution now that could be done but let's do it and then realize what it lands us into so if i find this solution what do i get i do i've already changed the settings to radius so we do mode shift and number four in this calculator gives you radius now x is sine inverse minus square root 3 over 2. So we do shift sine inverse within brackets. We do minus and then square root 3 and then move it out divided by 2 bracket close equal to what we get here is we get x equals to minus one third of pi which is pi by 3. So that is what my calculator is giving. Now let us see what really happens. We are looking for solutions within the domain which is between 0 to 2 pi. Minus pi by 3 is not in the domain so that is not our solution. Not our solution. Right? Do you realize that? So definitely uh, this step does not really work for us. So this step is is not good enough okay so so we are just crossing it out i'm making it so clear because i do not want you to follow this method and get stuck okay now what should we do that is the question to understand what we should really do is think about few basic things that is Maybe just sketch sine graph first and then we'll discuss. Okay. Sine function, as you know, looks like, uh, like this. It starts with 0, goes to 1, comes down to minus 1, and then again goes up. So within this interval of 0 to 2 pi, of 0 to 2 pi, it starts from 0, goes to plus 1, comes down to 0, and then to minus 1. So we could have a solution between plus 1 and minus 1 for sine x and then ends at 0. So that is your sine wave. So this is your x. We are considering x between 0 to 2 pi. Now when I say sine x is equal to minus square root 3 over 2, we know it is slightly higher than, uh, I mean it is minus, I should say lower than half, minus half, right? So it is somewhere kind of here. Let us see. Let us say this value is minus square root 3 over 2. So what do we expect? We expect two solutions. You see that? So these are the two solutions for us. So these are the two solutions for us. So we are expecting two solutions. Now the idea is how to get these two solutions. So what we did here was, let me write down this step. At this step, we try to understand or answer the question, how many solutions?
right so we got the answer there are two solutions okay now now the second step is is in which quadrant in which quadrant where are they that is what we have to answer which we get from the cast rule so so let's look into this part so what we can do is we can think about the coordinate plane and the cast rule which says when is this trigonometric function uh, positive so sine is positive in all are positive here sine is positive tan is positive cos is positive in quadrant 4 when is sine negative we have got sine x equals to minus square root 3 over 2 so where is it negative so we say well it is negative in quadrant 3 and in quadrant 4 so the solution lies in quadrant 3 or and i should say and in quadrant 4 right so in these two quadrants we have the solution so i need to find x which should actually lie in quadrant 3 and in 4 which is very clear here right so in this diagram as you can see these are your quadrants Now this is one of my first videos on finding the solutions of trigonometric linear equations and therefore we are getting into these details. So quadrant 1, quadrant 2, this is quadrant, let me write 3 here, and this is quadrant 4 within 0 to 2 pi. So these two solutions you can see are in quadrant 3 and 4 from the graph and here also it's clear between quadrant 3 and 4 we get negative value of sine x as minus square root 3 over 2. How do we find this value is now very important for us to understand. So what we really do is if we use the calculator, then we can only get one answer. And this time the answer didn't work. Sometimes it works, right? What we really do is we normally find the related acute angle first. We find related acute angle. and then we calculate solution that is the second step so our solution will be first step to the solution will be to find related acute angle that is to say what angle in quadrant one will give us square root three over two so this related acute angle we are saying sine alpha equals so in quadrant one all are positive so that we have to take positive value right square root three over two and from here we find alpha so we say related acute angle alpha is sine inverse of square root 3 over 2 right so you could use the calculator again and then find this value you could also use special triangles in this particular case right so you have shift sine inverse square root 3 divided by 2 bracket close equal to this time we get this angle as pi by 3 it makes sense this angle here is pi by 3 and that is our related acute angle pi by 3 is that okay so this is not the solution but this is the related acute angle which leads us to solution what the solution is solution lies in quadrant 3 and in quadrant 4 there are two solutions so what we do here is we make related we make acute angles in quadrant 3 and in quadrant 4 right so this these angles are pi by 3 do you see that now the solution always is to write the principal angle so what we do here is we write principal angle so for the solutions so one of the solutions will be pi plus pi by 3 right pi by 3 is your related acute angle so we can say now x equals to pi plus pi by 3 this is one solution which is this one and the other one is x equals to 2 pi minus pi by 3 2 pi minus pi by 3 do you see that now pi plus pi by 3 is 3 plus 1 4 which is 4 pi by 3 and 2 pi minus pi by 3 is 
when we take 3 as a common denominator, we get 6 minus 1, which is 5 pi, 5 pi by 3. Do you see? So we do get two solutions as expected, and we get their real values, which are 4 pi by 3 and 5 pi by 3. So now I can write down my answer, and that is x is equal to 4 pi by 3 and 5 pi by 3. Do you see that? And these are in radians. Now, radians is a ratio. So even if you don't write radians, it is understood. So it is not really important to write radians, but it's good to write. Even if you miss it, it is understood to be as radius, right? So I hope the steps are very clear. What we really do here is simplify the linear equation to get what sine x or cos x could be. Then we try to find how many solutions are there by looking at its graph. And then we figure out using the cost rule where the solutions lie. So like in this case, sine was negative. Therefore, the solution was in quadrant 3 and in quadrant 4. To find the exact value, in this particular case, you could have used special triangle. Let me make one. Let me make one here. For pi by 3, right? So for pi by 3, the special triangle, this is pi by 3, that is 90 degrees. Sides are 1, 2, and square root 3. Is it okay? So you could use this special triangle uh, for sine pi by 3, we know, square root 3 over 2 to find related acute angles. So this triangle is made to find alpha, the related acute angle. Do you understand? Once you find related acute angle, find the exact solution or the actual solution by understanding where the solution lies. Since it is in quadrant 3 and in quadrant 4, our solutions are pi, this is pi, plus pi by 3 or 2 pi minus pi by 3. So we get two different solutions. I hope these steps are clear. I'm Anil Kumar. You can always share and subscribe to my videos and feel free to write comments. Thank you and all the best.